Now let's do a little Q&A. We'll go in deep. Oh, Vicky, always on top of stuff. Jerry Hall, Twitter. If you don't know Jerry Hall, that guy's awesome. I do like that guy a lot. Not Mick Jagger's girlfriend or wife or whatever it was. Let's see. Max says, I've got your money. I told Max to keep it and buy some assets. Probably a better idea. Ugh, Minnesota. Oh, man. I remember snow. I remember snow. And it, it's nice every so often. <laughs> it is. But hey, man. Hey, Ricky. Kiara Coder, CIA should partner with JP Morgan for crime fighting. <laughs> That'd be the easiest of all time. Like, hey, look, we found everybody who's spoofing metals. They're right here. <laughs> They're right here. This is the easiest bust of the century. Ah, that's just the cost of doing business. Yeah, Chewy. I miss that guy. Let's see. Uh, I mean, I, they did the same thing with stocks. And everything skyrocketed. They're different with crypto. Yeah. Who knows, man? Who knows? Solana, what's going on? I don't know, but I think there's a big pump for Solana today. So congratulations, Solana holders. I have some Solana. I just didn't buy any. Just let it sit. But uh, I had sold it before, but not enough. But here we are. So who knows? Like people hate on Solana, right? I neither hate nor love it. It's just an asset, you know? So who knows? Who knows what will happen? But I think it, it, it went below 10 then it went up to $12. So congratulations if you bought the very bottom. I can never time it that well. I just dollar cost average and wait for some blow off tops and sell at that point. It takes some profits a little bit here and there. Illuminati is going to be broke. That's potentially true. Uh, Uncle Ricky says, can you imagine the U.S. federal government having a Bitcoin account? It'd be fun to track all the fraud going on. That would be interesting. That would be really interesting. And I would... I would bet you that all of a sudden that uh, mixers would all of a sudden be legal. So yeah, that'd be interesting to see like, because there was a black hole in the, uh, in the budget or the, or the spending for the government. I remember one, one year, I think we lost, I want to say 3 trillion somewhere just disappeared. I don't know. Black ops operations just gone. I wonder if they'd ever do that. Doubtful. Uh, I got a bad feeling about this. They tried to kill crypto and now they want to control it. I mean, the government. Look, here's what it's going to be. Um, we all think that crypto is going to be some great magical thing. And it actually could be. It'd be fantastic. But I was around before the internet was actually a thing. And I remember when, when the internet first came out, we didn't know what the heck it was going to be. But we did all pretty much figure that it would never be allowed because we're like, how... Is the government going to allow this free flow of information? Then governments will be toppled. They'll never allow this to happen. Well, they did. And you know what they did a great job of? They go, look, we can't stop it. It's like holding back a dam from crumbling and breaking apart. What we'll do is we'll just control it and we'll just put out misinformation and uh, we'll make it work for us. And that's pretty much what it does. Look at any election that's out there, especially in the United States. Misinformation and, and, and misdirection or redirection is a really great tactic. And uh, they control a lot of uh, the narrative out there. Not to say that they control everything, but they control just enough to move things along. And I think that could happen with crypto and digital assets. I could be wrong. Hope I'm wrong. But uh I'd love to the last ones. Seem to work out pretty well for the government. Okay. Uh, yes. Thank you, Vicky. I keep forgetting to say that. And also that. And also, yes, all that. Let's see. <laughs> I'm holding. That's good, man. I'm loading up. Yeah, I mean, look. Yesterday's video, we, we took a look at uh, just the dollar cost averaging. We took a look from... If you dollar cost average Bitcoin from either 2018, 19, 2021, 20, or Ethereum, or Cardano, or Dash, or Salt, it's a, I like that video. It was a pretty good video. And it just shows you that, you know, when everything's the darkest is when you should really be putting, if you want to make outsized returns, into certain projects. And we took a look at the ones that did well and the ones that did awful. Dash and Salt did awful. So like if you think that you can just dollar cost average into anything, you're wrong. If there's some things that will never come back. So choose your asset wisely. Protect your asset. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know. Not guilty. Well, look, O.J. Simpson said the same thing. Worked out pretty well for him. Ah, sweet Mary and Joseph. Naz, you're, you're late to the party. I'm going to stop talking about this. <laughs> ah, I'll say it one more time. So when, when our tribe gets together, people who watch this channel, Digital Asset News, and the tribe from, say, Into the Cryptoverse, and the tribe from Invest Dancers all get together, it was a big S show. People were hating on each and every one. And it was just, it got to be pretty bad. The whole point of getting together was to share information and get things out and to alleviate some of the stress that people were feeling, especially with the bear market as we tumbled down. Now, unfortunately, people just didn't see it that way and they, they, make it, they made it pretty tough. Uh, and it was just, sometimes we just don't mix like oil and water. So we just said, hey, I'm just going to step away for a bit. And then James did the smart thing. And he's like, if you guys want to step away, that's cool. I'm just going to get some more co-hosts. And he got CTO and some other guy. What is his name? Banter. The guy from Banter. And it uh, looks like a great show. So, and then we're going to go this other way because Ben was on James. Ben was on Guy's channel doing something for Coin Bureau. And Guy's like, hey, I like this. We should do more of this because I'm doing live streams. And so we said, hey, I got this guy that I know. And that was it. And that was it. Pretty much. Here we are. But, you know, a new year, new show. I mean, do something different, right? That's it. Uh, I don't think that's true. <laughs> Thanks, Aristotle. Bob, do you, th do you not think NFA, and that's the new show, what's it called? Not Financial Advice. Do you not think Not Financial Advice Weekly is too frequent? I got too emotionally attached to DCA. And not going to happen again. Exactly. It got a little bit too, too much. So NFA, I don't think is going to be as extensive as what we did before. We're trying to keep it light, just kind of go over a couple of things and just go from there. And uh, don't get too, don't get, don't get too enthralled into it. I must remember or remind everybody that as smart as Ben is and as charismatic as Guy is and as whatever I am, uh, we get things wrong all the time. And uh, we're just trying to give you the best information we possibly can, but nobody knows what's going to happen. So even if like, you know, like even a couple of days ago, I messed up. I thought that uh, Meld was going to drop Cardano and go on Avalanche totally. And that's, I must have misheard Ken. And that wasn't, that wasn't true. Don't take it for like as gospel, you know, just go, well, that's interesting. Maybe I'll just dwell on that and maybe do some more research on my own. Remember, nobody knows. That's it. So don't get too attached. Uh, let's see. <laughs> NFA is co-mingled YouTubers. Sin City Crypto, some of my favorites. What's up, gentlemen? Are we going to do a show some point or what? Did you guys reach out? I'm supposed to do a show. Whatever you guys want. You know how to get a hold of me. Uh... <laughs> Talk about bank. Bonk. I don't know what bonk is, Plasma. Oh, bonk. I don't know what that is. Let's see. <laughs> Solana is greater than Litecoin. I don't know, man. Litecoin's done pretty well. You know who likes Litecoin a lot? It's Tom Crown. Tom Crown's got this really good channel, does a lot of, a lot of really good TA, real laid back guy. Check him out. And uh, he loves Litecoin. I think he was on like the Litecoin conference. And I'm like, what? Really? But he's got a good reasons for it, I'm sure. Ooh, it's uh, scary. Good question. Uh, what changes would you make when they pass the unrealized gains taxes? First of all, Janet Yellen uh, talked about this as she wanted to tax unrealized your unrealized gains. What is what are unrealized gains? Unrealized gains are, <clears throat> let's just say, 
let's just rewind and go back to 2021 for a second. You buy Bitcoin at the beginning of 2021, or you buy Bitcoin at 10,000. It goes up to 20,000. You don't sell it at the end of the year, but the unrealized tax gain would be, hey, you just made $10,000, pay me IRS. That's essentially what it is. And she had talked about it. She talked about this is actually done in other countries. We should take a look at it. And then it was shot down. And then all of a sudden she was attacked and didn't go through. Now, if that does go through, first of all, that would be a nightmare. I don't see how they could possibly do that. And um, I would probably have a boating accident and lose all my crypto if that happened. But also, uh, as 1.7 trillion out of the debt, yes, that's going to happen. Vehicles like IRA and Roth are being eyed as government funding sources. Do you think it could happen? Yeah, anything could happen. The government's a funny place. Also, remember this thing called Social Security and Medicare? Yeah, that's not going to be around when uh, when we all turn 65. I'm older than, well, some of you. Some are older than me, but it won't be there when I re- hit that age, right? Maybe Medicare, maybe, hopefully. But uh, for Social Security and Medicare, they're always raiding into that into that fund. So I don't think that's sustainable. If they want to go into uh, the Roth IRAs or 401ks, or as, as they like to call them, entitlements, um, we'll see how long they can keep their seats as far as senators and congressmen and women. We'll see. I want to see if they can get away with that. Uh, oh, hey. Walking my A off in the snow and ice, Rob. Thanks again for the contest. Gotta love Iowa. Iowa Hawkers. So we're doing that um, that sweat coin challenge. You can just walk around top 30, get like uh, pretty cool stuff. So uh, I'll be updating the leaderboard as soon as I get the information from the sweat coin people. I should already have it. Uh, Gandalf the Gray says, I have to ask Riot Blockchain what next generation miners they have for the next bull run. It's a good question. But they have mostly Bitcoin, Bit, main ASICs. My question is this. The CEO was being interviewed on, uh, I want to say CNBC, and he said his break-even point for Riot was around $8,700 to $8,900, their break-even point for Bitcoin. So if it falls below that, they're not going to be profitable. And I thought it was interesting because I've heard much, much higher numbers. And I think it's because they made a deal with the state of Texas that they would sell back their electricity. I think they've accumulated some uh, pretty high-end mining equipment. And I just want to talk to Chad about that and see how that worked out because it sounds like they're getting for a steal. Three trillion, no biggie exactly. Who cares? It's just, it's just printing money. Somebody said this yesterday and they were right. I was talking about, oh, Vicky asked me this question, which was, what was, what was my story about losing 500 Bitcoin? And the story was, son came home from school, said, hey, I got 500 Bitcoin or 500 bucks. This is in 2012. He won it. And I said, what's Bitcoin? He told me what it was. I go, that's stupid. And that doesn't make any sense. And of course, here I am years later doing a channel of crypto. I know. But uh, I said, um, I, I was talking about it. And I said, uh, I told him, I go, why would anybody use Bitcoin? It's just stupid nerd money nerdy magic internet money and then somebody in the comments said hey rob just remember the government is doing the same thing it's just not nerd money they just create it from thin air too and i was like that's a good point so yeah that's uh, one of those things but again even if i had 500 bitcoin for 500 bucks you know i would have sold it if it was 500 i would have sold it a thousand and called myself a genius so what are you gonna do edward fox Standing, Edward Fox is not an IRS agent. <laughs> Although that, that picture does look at, look, really looking for the NFA show. Yes, I have to. I am too. It's going to be fun, fun times. Good times. <laughs> Why are all the ETH killers getting killed, keep getting killed? It's a good question. It's the same thing that I've heard about as far as uh, the Bitcoin flipping. When's it going to flip? This one's going to flip. It's going to flip Bitcoin. Hasn't happened yet. Maybe this will be the maybe this will be the norm. Maybe who knows? Let's see. Time to watch Margin Call. That's a great movie. If you haven't watched that, that's a great movie. Uh, yeah. Mossman says, imagine our taxes on a blockchain and the government can't hide where money goes to. 
maybe that's why they're more concerned about it. But I will tell you this. For me, it's interesting that in this day and age, because in 2017 when I got in, it was we were like, it was always a breath away from getting banned by the government. It was always that. And no one really took us seriously. And we're just, you know, just nerds and dorks for, for getting into this, this type of uh, asset class. And that was it. And then 2018 came along and we were looked down as just dunderheads, just, just dumb. Because look, look at how much it fell, you morons. So in 2018, it was pretty tough. And I just never thought that we'd get back. I, ne I mean, I never thought that it would go that low and it did. And of course, I thought we'd get back to it. But four year cycles, here we are. But the whole thing is we never had like big institutions really coming in like we've already had, like like the micro strategies, like, I mean, big black rocks and fidelities talking about it, uh, you know, getting into it. We never had um, a sitting president talk about it. First, it was. First it was Trump actually, and then now it was uh, it was Biden. And we never had the U.S. government did studies on crypto and digital assets. Never, and that just happened what a year or so ago. So, and we never had like a sovereign nation using it as as uh, as currency. So, like when I see all the things that are going on, just for Bitcoin, it's essentially, I see some things moving forward as far as what could potentially happen with other altcoins, but who knows? Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Jupiter says, so when the Fed introduces this, a CBDC, central bank digital currency later this year, will it be via a stimulus play to accelerate adoption by the sheeple? I don't know how they're going to do that, quite honestly. Like, I mean, they have a hard enough time sending out, mailing out checks for STEMI checks. Right. I think there's enough people that are electronically savvy. Most of us have smartphones, so I can see it. But yeah, I just what'll probably happen is the majority will just accept it. Especially here's the thing. If it's a CBDC and they go, look, we're rolling this out, and everybody gets 50 bucks free. Does it cost the government anything? Because they just make it out of thin air, just like what we just talked about. So they'll probably just do it that way. It'll adopt. They won't really care. And then before you know it, they're like, We're not tracking you. We're not tracking you. And of course, they, of course they are. <laughs> the same thing. I mean, hell, even, even Facebook does that when they first rolled out. Hey, we're not tracking you. We're not, we don't sell your data. They sold your data so much. Plus me. Like, I still do ads on, on, on Facebook for, for one of my, or for our charity organization. And uh, like on Facebook, I can find, you can narrow it down to a person between the ages of 30 and 33 who is a single mom that lives in Tulsa, Oklahoma, that likes CrossFit and uh, works out and also makes between $30,000 and $40,000 a year. I can granular break it down and show ads to just that person. So they take your data, government will take it, everybody takes your data. That's how it is. That's why these wallets are pretty important. Hmm. Ah, let's see. Hey, Rob, in your video several days ago, it seems that you stopped DCA into Near and Ave. Any particular reasons? Near, I just, like, I really like the project. And they already have sharding, which is what Ethereum is trying to do right now. They are proof of stake. I have, I'm staking all my Near. And, uh, but I just thought that uh, it was just a little bit too soon. I thought there was some more upside for some other projects, such as Bitcoin and Ethereum and Cosmos some Algorand, some uh, Matic. Matic was a bigger one. And some Cardano. So I just, I felt like that was it. And then Aave, I thought was a great DeFi play. But again, I think it's just a little bit too fast. So I just fell off for a bit. We'll see how it goes. No particular reason. Yes, I have YouTube shorts. I'm trying to get that out, apparently. This is the time to build. And that's it. Um... That's not bad. It's not a bad plan. Joby. Anderson, I've been buying across the board for some time now. Very happy with my current portfolio. Love the slow burn approach. And that's just it. Like, like CTO Larson says DCA sucks. And he's probably right. I mean, it's it does suck. It hurts. It's hard. It's like in 2018, it was like throwing sand in the ocean. He was like, well, that money's gone. 
but you know, it's amazing how that those seeds that I planted in 2018 grew into a pretty strong oak tree in 2021 that I could depend on and harvest and all that good stuff. So it just takes time. Farmer analogy. Yeah. Doing it all today. Uh, <laughs> if the key don't fit, you must have quit. Yeah. So Rob, is there incentive for Bitcoin miners to stick around as the supply gets cut down over and over again? Remember, it's only every, it's every four years. I still think they're doing pretty good. And um, I kind of see it as, as time goes on, the leanest, most savvy businesses that uh, do Bitcoin mining are the ones that are going to, going to make it. And the ones that can't be profitable because they can't buy the new high-end uh, Bitcoin miner, they can't cut a deal with the state that they live in or the country that they're at and can't get super low electricity costs so it's super high. Those are the ones, the other ones are the ones going to make it. And the other smaller miners will probably be put out for, you know, and set of like small little areas. But that's, that's how I see things for Bitcoin. I mean, there's other proof of works, just not many anymore. Used to be, used to be Ethereum. That stopped. Ah, uh, see you, Neil. Have a good day at work. Let's see. That's it. Ran. Banter. Right. How much? Why so much hate? How does hate works? It produces some kinds of capital. I, I don't know what that is. Yeah, guy's got a lot of subs. Works hard. Smart guy. And like, I know when people will say, ah, guy's just an actor. He reads from a, from a teleprompter. If, if, if I met guy, like I said, I told us yesterday, like last year. Shoo. Yeah, it was last year. Yeah, April. Jeez. Yeah, April. And uh, I was there for his conference and got to talk on stage and all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, like we talked for like an hour. I mean, behind the scenes. I was like, man, this guy knows a lot about crypto because he's been investing since like 2014, 2013, 2014. It's because he's been investing longer than I have. That's just it. <laughs> I can't, I don't know what that means. Uh, James will be the correct one in 25. Like, yeah, man. I mean, look, it's not about being correct or incorrect. It's just, you know, just remind, <sighs> for you, for me, okay, how about this? For me personally, I will never be 100% correct, right? So I just kind of hedge my bet a little bit. Like the things that I heard in 2022, I knew it wasn't a great opportunity to fully dollar cost average. I knew it wasn't a good idea to, you know, put a bunch of money in because of the, I, I was fairly certain 90 percent plus certain that we're going to go down lower i still think we're going to go down lower i still do but there's that five percent of my brain that says you know what everybody's been wrong before so just hedge your bet set a dollar cost averaging full just do what's called micro dcing just put a little bit in take a little bit of profits out grease the wheels make sure that you're ready for it and then go from there and then for me, it, it worked out okay in 2022. It wasn't the greatest. I mean, if I would have waited till this year, I think this year is going to be a better year to invest. I think we're going to see some lower lows. And that's it. And uh, over time, it'll be okay. But it's just, I, I know some people think that, you know, this is this the year when we pivot and it'll be great. Historically, that's true. But it's weird times, man. And uh that's why you just take profits along the way. That's why I got these rules up here. Those rules. And the last one is take profits. Take profits along the way. Nobody ever went broke doing that. That's it. And let's see. Now, oh, see, DCA is hosted by three traders. Right? Me and Ben are not traders. If we are, we're the worst traders of all time. All right, let's do it. Sweet. Get that done. 
<laughs> Man, well, that's pretty funny. First of all, why I'd have P Peter Schiff on, even though he lives in he lives in the same island I do. He's he's in Puerto Rico. What do you think he's going to say when he's on here? You think he's going to say, you know what, Rob? I think you're right. I've been wrong this whole time. I think Bitcoin could save uh, the world, and I think it's a it's a fine investment vehicle. And I've been wrong this whole time. I'm sorry for the people that I've hurt. I think I'll be okay, and I'm going to leave now. Thank you, sir. Firm handshake. Out the door he goes. Probably not. Peter Schiff will probably be here. I'm like, you and everybody else you know are morons. Bitcoin's awful. Gold is the only thing that's going to is going to make sense, even though he makes he owns more stock than than gold, but whatever. And uh, you guys are going to all suckers, and it's a big Ponzi scheme. So I just, that's essentially the whole thing. And, and, and Harry Dent, sweet Mary and Joseph, I mean, every year is the worst year of all time. Everything's going to collapse. I, I find him highly entertaining, but, I mean, come on. <sighs> I don't know. Yes. Good point, AK. Just DEXs this time. You know, if you take a look at, at that, did Uniswap go down? Did they steal anybody's money? Worked out okay so far. Dexes were great. Um, yeah, I think Dexes will do well in the future. It's just, uh, you know, making sure they hit their utility stride of what they're supposed to do. <laughs> what? There's a group called the Crypto Sims. That's not a great name, but okay. Exactly. Digital Cable says, can I get a refund on my unrealized losses? And that's the whole, the whole thing with Janet Yellen. She was talking about these unrealized, we're going to tax your unrealized gains. And someone said, well, what about my unrealized losses? Because guess what? I'm pretty sure most of us that are watching the show are down for the year. So I'd like to take all those losses right now. Thank you. That would be fair, but it still would be dumb. It just wouldn't make any sense. A rusty trombone. Classic. All right. Yep. Going to set it better. We're all in pain. It's not going to last forever. So do your research and buy up what you can. Won't stay this for long. No, you're right. But like some people, they always only tell you like, like the bright story. You know, the bright story is coming, but it's going to be 2024 or five or six, maybe even seven. I don't know. So the short term, just be ready for some more pain. It's great. Like, if you're a, a sadist or a masochist, this is like the best time of all time. You just get punished constantly. Uh, but there is, there is light. It just takes a little bit of time. I got, that's what's great. I got time, right? No big deal. Ah, damn it. I keep getting beat on sweat coin. When can I buy weed with Bitcoin sats? You know, I thought about that. And uh, there's this thing my friend Steven uses called the Fold app. And you can download it right now, I think, in certain, certain, uh, certain areas. And since Steven's here in Puerto Rico, it means that you can use Puerto Rico if you're in Puerto Rico. And what's great about Puerto Rico is that you can buy weed here. It's medicinal, but, I mean, who doesn't have a migraine every now and then, right? So you can use your Fold app buy certain, I mean, items, and then it pays you back in sats. That's pretty cool. So there you go. It was a good stream title. Eh. Isn't Social Security Welfare by another name? Eh. It's supposed to be your retirement. Remember, welfare, like, when I was growing up, I know people who never worked, and they were just on welfare their entire life. So... They didn't really add into the system. Like for you who have held a job and have done things and have paid taxes, that's where it comes from. Uh, unfortunately, you know, who knows how sustainable it is. I just never understood it. Yes, I believe taxing and rise gains is on account. At least it should be. Yeah, Z Hodel. It's, it's a good time. I'm just trying to keep myself busy. Like today, today I got to, you know, Get up, walk the dogs, went to play beach volleyball over in uh, Isla Verde. And then, no, no, Condado, sorry. And then uh, had to clean one of our condos because, of course, 
the uh, cleaning crew didn't show up. So when you're the owner and you're doing short-term rentals, who gets to clean? You do. And then, of course, did a, uh, I'm trying to do more just to keep myself busy. Uh, one recorded video just about the general things. Like yesterday, we talked about dollar cost averaging in different time, time periods for different cryptos. And then today, we talked about uh, what is undervalued, what is overvalued as far as stocks versus crypto. That was pretty good. So yeah, and then that pushes this out to like right now it's 5.30 here in Puerto Rico. So yeah. Any thoughts on Filecoin? I had some. I don't know if I still have it though. I think I bought it on Coinbase, but I thought it'd be pretty good. But there's a lot of competition for storage crypto. I like what they're doing. I can see where it could actually have utility. Just depends on, you know, again, uh, how big is the community? The utility is there. If you want to storage, you know, use the excess uh, amount of storage you have in your computer and and put that on the blockchain, right? Team looked pretty good and the tokenomics look reasonably okay. So uh, it just depends on, you know, how big it actually gets into the public consciousness and people start using it. Yes, Joby, Riot is killing it. <laughs> That's a good one. Ooh, David, 65 in eight months. Congratulations. A lot of people don't make that far. Uh, Aristotle. Lynn Alden has given her latest outlook on what Bitcoin did. You should get her on the show, Rob. Uh, yeah, I should. So many. Such a smart lady. That it's. Uh, I'll just be asking questions and trying to keep up with her. I'm not that. I'm not. I'm not as bright as her. So very difficult to keep up. <laughs> Have you, do you guys know that Beardy has his own YouTube channel? It is fantastic. He does very few videos, but they're really good. They're very short. Beardy, if you, <laughs> I'm a subscriber. Ah, good day. Yeah, Tesla. Tesla took a big hit. It's funny though. Didn't the numbers come out and they just delivered like an enormous amount of, of, of EVs? And people are like, it's weird because you know, they did what they said they're going to do. Then of course they dropped precipitously. I mean, crazy amount. So uh, sometimes it's just it's just the narrative of the company. It's it's not the uh, the output or the production. It's just the narrative of what it is. Just like crypto, right? Like it's just the narrative. The narrative isn't like did Bitcoin get hacked? Did Joe Biden come on and said, "Hey, I created you know all crypto. I created Bitcoin," which would be funny if you think about it. Or was there some uh, massive double spend in crypto? No, it has nothing to do with it. FT First of all, FTX started the screw up. They brought down Luna. They brought down Three Arrows Capital. That brought down Celsius and Voyager and BlockFi. And eventually it caught up with them and bit them in the A and FTX fell. The things that screwed us up are people. People are, you can't trust people. And those centralized entities, those are the ones that get wiped away. And those are the ones that screw us. It's the decentralized exchanges that actually did pretty good and decentralized applications that actually do quite well. It's just getting past the people. And that's what we're trying to do. Ugh. That's right. That's right, Tyler. Did the, did the roof and walls blow off your pool, Rob? And the below, is that all is left? Yeah. No, it's doing okay. This is a green screen, so I just changed the green screen. Sometimes I sometimes I put I have a dynamic green screen where I cause people to walk through it. That's pretty good. It's tough to do though. Uh Tesla's way down. Yeah. I have some Tesla, just not much. Rob, do you know the Up Only podcast? If you guys are really interested for a short crypto video. Sure. Have them reach out on Twitter. I don't know. I'll go on shows, though. Uh, Naughty Elon. Let's see. Perfect sharding for tacos. Happy Taco Tuesday to you, too. Uh Jackal, what is happening in Bitcoin as far as like building? That is my question. And um, there's one thing I want to show you, a data point. 
there's this great website. It's called Look Into Bitcoin. And there's one I wanted to sh take a look at, all the charts. And it's free to use. That's why I'm always recommending it. This one, Bitcoin Lightning Capacity and Nodes. I found this interesting. I'm like, what the heck happened here? Because the nodes just fell off the cliff. 7,000. Well, I don't know if this just, you can't just lose 10,000 in a day. It doesn't make any sense. So I thought that was interesting. And then uh, Lightning Capacity. I don't know what happened here. So again, the nodes went off and now here we are back down to, to this point. I just don't understand why that happened. So if anybody knows, let me know. I've, so again, I have to ask Jackal, what's, who's building on Bitcoin? That's the question. Ah, millennial wealth. I'm learning Solidity, Python, and host of program language. Also gonna learn blockchain programming. I have a playlist on my channel. Thank you, sir. I probably might at some point check it out, but uh, who knows? <laughs> Not everyone is a pro trader like C2. It's getting a little too bright in here. There we go. It's better. Ah, starting to look like uh, I'm about to explode or something. Oh, yeah. Happy 14th birthday, Bitcoin. Thank you, Ryan. I forgot about that. Today is the day. Thoughts on Hex? I, I sure hope that Pulse Chain rolls out. I saw Richard Hart tweet out. He said, hey, Pulse Chain's not here yet. Welcome to software. And that was it. I was like, oof, looking pretty tough. And I had heard some rumblings about investigations, but, you know, whatever. I, I don't have any, so I don't really know about it. And, of course, everybody's going to call it a scam. But you know the thing, though, like, you have to understand that everything's a scam. Like, trust me, my brother who deals in just traditional equities, he looks at me and is like, so how's that scam market doing? I'm like, oh, here we go. Everything's a scam. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you still bank with JP Morgan? They're scammers, too. Everything's good. No. CPR says, how do you find what products to invest in? So I don't invest into too many new things. There's this, I have a, another channel called Dan Degen. And um, these are the ones that, first of all, I, there's a couple of people I trust and know. And these people that I know are from here, from Puerto Rico, and they are crypto OGs. And they're here for a specific reason. And these people, you'll never see them on social media. They'll never post anything. They'll never have a channel because they believe in just being low key. So I've run into a couple of people, met some people, and, and they tell me some things behind the scenes. And these are the ones that I get involved into. And uh, those are the ones like <sighs> the ones that I got involved. I'll show you. Jeez. Where is it? There's a link in the description. And if you scroll down, not that one. This right here. So first of all, that video we did yesterday where I show you all the uh, different examples of DCing over, over five years, 18, 19, 20, 21. Yeah, four years. Uh, you can find that here. That's the slideshow. Four-year cycles right there. My old exit strategy, da-da-da. And here's my degen plays, as I call them. These are the ones that I did. There's four. Gensakishi, Everdome, Fame, and Sweatcoin. And um, in all honesty, I mean, Gensakishi did, phew, I think that was one of my best, the better ones. So you can't look at the price now, obviously. But if we go back.
So when I got in, of course, I, I couldn't, I didn't get my coins early because that was the deal. Like they didn't pay me to talk about it. I had to pay them. And they said, oh, yeah, also we're going to lock up your, your tokens. And I was like, that sucks, but okay. But it, it made sense because there's an allocation and I get an allocation every three months. So like, I mean, we got in for a penny, penny and a half. And uh, it went all the way up to a dollar sixty-two, so pretty good, right? But I couldn't sell anything until like over here, or something. And, I didn't, and it was only like a small percentage, so I was like, "That's fine," because that means I can't dump anybody. Everdome, same thing. Fame, fame was a, a tricky one. It made sense because fame was what they do is they. The token itself, it's, it's, it's like the UFC of Europe. And what they do is they, they have influencers, people on TikTok and YouTube, whatever else, and they just make them fight. Essentially, that's what it is. And since they have such a big reach, I thought it would work out pretty well. And as they flatline, but it's because it would have worked out pretty well. It's 32, 30, 44 cents. Fame was a, again at a penny. Unfortunately, I talked about it. Everybody could get in, but I couldn't. I got. I had this. I sold like around right here when, when I actually had the. I still have a bunch of tokens because, that's what it was. And then, uh, sweat coin, another one like that. But it's the same dealy. It's all the same stuff. It's just when I get in these projects, like I have to pay to get in, because if they pay me, it doesn't it wouldn't make any sense. Because then, I, then it would just be like everybody else out there. And then what I do is, what I look at is the cut. I just look at the community, how big is it, how massive could it be. And then fame was a no-brainer. Because fame was, it was all these, these fighters that were influencers. Like, oh, that should pretty, do pretty well. And then with, um, with Gensu Kishi, that was a working game for the last eight years. And it was on PlayStation and Nintendo and iOS and Android. And then it transferred over to the metaverse. So that was a no-brainer. And then Sweatcoin, that's like the number one downloaded app in 2021 for health and fitness. I was like, why wouldn't I do those things? So the community was big. The utility, I believed in, I mean, with fame, sure. Gensu Kishi was, uh, was built on Matic. And I thought that was a pretty good idea for the metaverse world and play to earn all that stuff. And then, of course, Sweatcoin, the utility is just walk and you get free coins. Everything's free, sure. Tokenomics were good and the team was stellar. So that's what I look at. The, the community utility team and tokenomics. Now, the things that I talk about work out pretty well. If you just listen, of course, you can get in and buy and, and sell soon enough. I have to get in early and then wait. But I always knew that they were going to be two, three, four year time frames. I was okay with that. So that's a long answer for a short question. Okay. Uh, let's see. Instead of doing a DCA, I'm doing DCA at right times. Using TA to determine better times to buy lows versus just buying randomly. That's a good idea. You can try it. And uh, Tiago says, when do you think ETH will hit 10K? <laughs> that was my original assessment. I thought ETH would hit 10K. Who knows? I don't think you're looking at those numbers. 2025, 2026, maybe 2027. And that's pushing it. I'm very, I try to be as conservative as I can. Look, I thought Bitcoin go to 100,000. It was wrong. Went to 70 though. Felt pretty good about that. Any updates on Gemini earned frozen assets recently? Yeah, the Winkle, I think Tyler sent out the letter to Barry Silbert from the DCG group and said, look, you're hiding behind things and you need to an answer for this. We need to open these things up. And uh, they gave them until January 8th to come to a resolution. So January 8th is apparently is the, is the day. Yeah, that's true. SBF might not be done. In a plea deal to explore more crypto insolvencies in front. Maybe that was the plan. Go in there and just say, all right, not guilty. And then make the prosecutor come to you and say, okay, let's do a deal because you know you're guilty, so let's just work this out. And we'll cut some time off. Hmm. 
Ricky says, Rob, do you buy, do you just buy properties with opportunities to just rent or do you purchase raw land as well? I do both. So me and the wife, we do uh, short-term rentals and it works out pretty well. I mean, we have properties uh, here in Puerto Rico and Houston and El Paso and short-term rentals work out pretty well, but when they start to decline, which they are still up there, but they might decline over this year because I think there's a recession coming. Then we will just trans we'll just transition to long term rentals, having people sign six month leases, twelve month leases, and go from there. And as far as land, I don't buy as much, but uh, we still have land still own in our in our portfolio, and that's what we do. If there's a great land opportunity, we'll buy it, but that won't come until mid to the end of 2023, maybe 24. It's just holding on. And that's it. I love property. Property is great. You know, depreciation is fantastic. You use it on taxes. And then it's just there. And you know what's great about land or properties in general? You have to check your stupid portfolio all the time to see if it's up or down. Nobody cares. I'm just like, um, I bought I bought property. This is, this is in it for the long haul. Yeah, Peter Schiff is annoying. Like, I know he's on Pomp's show and Pomp tries to persuade him, but it's a, it's a lost battle. Sorry. That's fine. Ugh, wouldn't that be the longest winded conversation you've ever heard in your life? Sailor and Schiff, that would be a long, drawn out combo. Will you consider running crypto curl? He's already got an open invite. Guy never reaches out. I reach out to him all the time on Twitter. I'm up for 2023. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Going to caddyshack my pool, birdie. When do you think, Eve? again, 2025, six or seven? Who knows? Do you watch Real Vision Channel? No. There's this guy, though, Darius. I forgot his name, but he was on Paul Barone Network. Real smart guy. Real in tune with what's going on. I can get behind him. He has, he has like, a lot of good data points. Real good guy. But real vision? No. Mm. <laughs> that must have been, been a crack in character. I don't see him doing that. But maybe that'd be great. I think... Once X or once Ripple wins that lawsuit, it'll extra people go will skyrocket. It's coming. It's only a matter of time, I think. I never talk about it because it's just such a slog. Thoughts on World Mobile Token? That is the one project I don't think I'll ever sell. And uh, I got a pretty good amount. I'm a node operator for them. Happy to do it. That is a great project with great utility with a fantastic team that knows exactly what they're doing so far the whole thing is can they scale and i'm um, rooting for them big time sbf asked judge to redact the names of the two who co-signed his bond who could it be kevin o'leary and larry david <laughs> maybe kol larry david who knows Uh, okay. I think that's it. I think I answered everybody's. No. <laughs> ben Chicken says, Rob is super bored. Sign him up for all the shows. I'm not bored, bored. I'm just trying to keep myself busy. You know, after like my best friend passed, Chewy, and uh, it's just tough without him. So I just try to just go all day long. It sucks. That's dumb. Richard Hart's a guy I'll never trust. I sure is flamboyant. Mm. I think that's it. Hold on. See, there you go. Pro is bullish on pulse. Good. 
done your research, you look at it, like, I think it's going to work out pretty well. What's wrong with that? I think it's going to be awesome. That's it. See, that's the thing. If you do your own research and really dive into it, never invest into something you don't understand. And if you really understand something, or you think you understand something, just get into it. And then just say, okay, well, I know a lot about it. And as time goes on, you find something that doesn't jive. You're like, hold on, wait. Bitcoin had a double spend? I think I'm going to stop investing into Bitcoin. You know what I mean? Because you know about that. Someone else, if you walk up to anybody in the street and go, hey, bad news, there was a double spend on Bitcoin. Like, what the hell are you talking about? But you know. So this is one of those things where you can say, well, I've done my research and uh, when there's some shenanigans, I jump out. What the? And Pro says, how quickly can you need to fly to Puerto Rico if a storm is coming? There's like a storm all the time. Uh, that's not true, actually. There's, there's tropical storms. But uh, never tried to get a flight out. I never tried to beat out a hurricane. Not a big. That's it, Darius Dale. That's the guy. Good guy, smart guy. A lot of data points. Good question. Luis Payano. Rob, when it's time to sell, why do people move into exchange for swap on decks? I don't know. You can do it. <clears throat> but when you swap, some people just want to swap for, for fiat. I mean, oh no, excuse me. When they want to sell, they just want to they want to sell it for cash. But you can you can swap out for for stable coins. Then the, the thing then becomes is like, what do you do with your gains? So like let's just let's just give you a prime example. Most people have bills, right? You might have bills. You might have bills in your credit card, or maybe you still owe in your car, or maybe you haven't paid your house off. So when you make that that swap on the DEX for USDT, USDC, or whatever you know stable coin that it is, now how do you pay off the other parts of that? That's I, I think where it comes into it. If there was some kind of way to swap things out on on MetaMask, which would be your your browser wallet, sure. I mean, you can swap. You can use uh, MoonPay, but their rates are freaking outrageous. I mean, four per, four to six percent on a swap. Sorry, like that was the whole thing. The whole point for crypto was to get rid of middleman, and because of MoonPay and what it is, I don't like MoonPay at all. Period. I think it's just a ridiculously high amount, and they'll say, "Well, this is just how it is. That's just how blah 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 blah." But if you take a look at like like the rates for Visa, I mean, it's in in some places in a, in a preferred partner, it's less than 0.5%. So I'm looking at that, I'm like, what's the advantage here? I don't get it. Not a fan of them, period. All right. So that was, that was the long answer. <laughs> Pain. Yeah, that's a good good question. I mean, you can do it, and then you can just put on it to, uh, then we want to get cash. It depends on what you want to do it with, right? Transaction fees. Yeah, so Satwise is right. We covered this yesterday. This was about, there was a, one of the, a Bitcoin core developer who got hacked, his wallet got hacked. Or it wasn't even his wallet. First of all, it wasn't a cold storage wallet. He left things on the server. <clears throat> he did uh, uh, PGP, pretty good privacy. <clears throat> and apparently that server had already had problems before. <clears throat> so he had done some, I, in my personal opinion, some rookie mistakes. And I just don't believe the story anyhow. I don't see how a Bitcoin core developer would leave $3.6 million and something like that and just say, oh, I just, you know, I got a hack and a hack and all my, all my crypto is gone. All my Bitcoin's gone. I'm like, really? really? Yeah. That's what you, you're going to want us to believe? All you had to do is use a ledger. You know how easy that is? I don't know. Seems ridiculous to me. Yeah, Chris. So here's the thing. Rob, about your Sweatcoin challenge. Many of us Android are able to join. We click the invite link. It opens the app and nothing happens. Can you check with Sweatcoin? What's up? Thanks. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on with um, with the app itself. Maybe there's an update. I'm waiting for a callback from 
the support team and we'll get it all figured out. But don't worry, it'll still count, it'll still count those, those steps. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Gene says more of a theft than a hack, equivalent of leaving your wallet on a park bench. Return to find the cash missing. Oh my goodness. Oh my God, I do declare. I can't believe I've been robbed in broad daylight. Yeah, that type of stuff. Anyway, it's welcome. That'd be nice. I don't think that's going to happen. That's a good question. Anybody get paid in crypto or a drone? I don't know. Yeah, man, don't worry. So there's like, like on, on the app, I can only follow so many people, but it should be automatic when you sign up on my link. It should just go to it. So I'm just going to figure that out. Yeah, Cisco. Thanks for keeping strong. I mean, I got decades to outlast these smart money. First of all, smart money isn't smart money. Smart money is just big money. I don't believe they're smart money at all. I think they just got a lot of money. I've met a lot of people, a lot of money, and they're dumb as hell. Sorry, that's just the truth. Uh, I'm no genius and I'm doing okay. So look, I don't think it really comes down to like how smart you are or whatever else. It's just this grit and determination and just sticking with it. It's just, it's just like in the military, like all you had to do was you didn't have to be the brightest or the smartest or the fastest or the strongest. You just have to show up with the right uniform every day and you get promoted. That was it. It's very simple. Don't kill anybody. That was the other one. If you just did that, that was all. So Cisco, there's no, there's no real, real smart money out there. It has a couple people, but uh, mostly it's just big money. So then once you, there was a quote by Steve Jobs, and he said, he said, once you realize that uh, the world and life is made up by people who are no smarter than you, then you realize that you have a long way uh, for prosperity. That's really what it comes down to. So, all right. So everybody, that's it. Man, an hour and five minutes. All right, time to go eat. Got to go. go back to the reality. But thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate everybody. If you liked today's long video, an hour and six minutes plus, hit the like button. And that's the new format. We're going to try to do pre-recorded one. And then we'll do a quick news story, which is like maybe eight, seven, eight minutes just to get everybody up to set the speed. And then I'll just answer a bunch of questions. And we'll just chat. That's it. Thanks so much, everybody. I appreciate y'all, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a good night or day. Adios.